Hey guys, my name is Ryan. Right now I'm shooting on a $5,000 setup. And my goal in this video is to help you achieve similar results using only your iPhone. So right now this is the $5,000 setup and right here is the iPhone setup. So to achieve a cinematic look with your iPhone, you can't do it within the standard camera app. You're gonna need to be able to control the settings manually. So there's different apps that you can download. I've messed with a bunch. The cheapest and best version I found is Pro Movie. So go ahead and download the app Pro Movie. You can use the app for free, but there is gonna be a watermark. It's $3 to get rid of the watermark forever. And that was the most cost-effective option. Unfortunately, all of the good camera apps, they do cost money, especially if you're gonna be taking video. There are some free options if you're taking photos, but for the sake of this video, we wanna make sure we're shooting in video. And yes, my dog is roaming around. His name is Oliver. He is the sweetest pup. All right, so when you open up Pro Movie, I've paid the $3 to get rid of the watermark, so now I have the full access version. So you're going to see at the bottom is your settings, your camera settings. On the left-hand side, you're gonna see, mine says 4K 24 FPS. If you wanna click that button here, you're gonna, all your settings are gonna show up for your, your video settings. You wanna make sure that you're always shooting at 4K if your phone is able to do that. So 4K at 24 frames per second. Uh, you can keep the quality at standard and then just go ahead and hit the check mark on the right side. So 4K is the highest quality possible. I'm sure if you watch YouTube videos, you'll understand 4K video is the best. Now, 24 frames per second. I chose this because if you ever watch a movie, they typically shoot at 24 frames per second. And that's because motion blur. So when I move my hand, you're gonna see there's motion blur. If I were to shoot the same video at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, it's going to decrease the amount of motion blur that's in the video. But the motion blur in the video is what makes it look so freaking good. So we want to make sure we have that motion blur and we can achieve that by shooting at 24 frames per second. All right, so now you're gonna see as I move my camera around, the bottom ISO and WB, which stands for white balance, those two numbers are moving. So right now they're on auto settings. That's how you can tell that they're on auto settings. So if if you tap the ISO button, you're gonna be able to manually control it and then you're gonna see a lock pop up in the middle. That means that now the ISO is locked at whatever you set it to. The higher your ISO is, the grainier your image is going to be. So you wanna to try to keep your ISO as low as possible. So I'm gonna keep it at 200. So as low as possible, I can go to 34. That's really, really good. I'm gonna keep it at 200. That's an okay place to keep it. The next thing I'm going to edit is the shutter, right to the left of ISO, shutter. Now, the rule of thumb is your shutter speed is going to be double what your frame rate is. So right now we're shooting at 24 frames per second, so therefore we're gonna keep it at, technically it's 48, but everyone just does 50. So one over 50, I'm gonna keep that, take that up. All right, there we go. You're seeing, <laughs> I should have picked a better subject for this. All right, whatever. All right, so your white balance, if I click this, right now it's an auto. If I go to manual, the K, white balance is the temperature of the video. So it's between the blue and the orange. The blue being cool, you're gonna hear me say cool. And then orange being a warm video. And that temperature is measured in Kelvin. So that's why you see the K there. So I'm gonna choose manual. And then right on the side, you see how I'm gonna get to choose what my white balance is. The lower the Kelvin, the colder it is, the higher the Kelvin, the hotter, the warmer it is. And you can see here in the light, 56 Kelvin is considered the middle ground. So 55 Kelvin, that's pretty good. But you're gonna need to adjust it. The one thing you wanna pay attention to when you're adjusting your white balance is the skin tones. You wanna make sure that the skin looks as natural as possible, unless you're going for a stylized look. Otherwise, then you would change it to whatever the heck you want. But once you've got your white balance set, the next thing you want to set is your focus. So I'm looking, I'm looking around for something to latch my focus onto because I, I just want to show you, I want to show you the power of this. So right now I got my remote here. I got my my light remote. I'm just gonna set that right on the edge of my dog's crate, and I just want to show you when you rack the focus, it's going to give you that blurry background. And I'll show you in a bit um, an example of all of this with a better subject <laughs> with me in focus. But once you've got all of that under control you are ready to hit record and start filming. All right, so right now I am filming on my iPhone. The biggest thing when you're filming on your iPhone is you wanna make sure that you're using your rear facing camera. 
The problem with this is when you are using your rear facing camera, you're not gonna be able to see yourself unless you have some kind of external monitor. I know that they make some kind of mirror device to attach to your phone. And when you do this, you're gonna need something to prop your phone up on. I don't have anything to prop my phone up on, so I, gra I actually grabbed my $700 stabilizer and then attached my iPhone to that because that was the best I had. I don't have any iPhone tripods, but just get creative. I, I shot videos when I propped my iPhone up on a bookcase and just used a bunch of books. You can use anything, use a chair, use books, use a shelf, use any kind of prop you can find. And then if you don't wanna buy anything to, um, to make sure that you can see yourself, just make sure that you prop up a mirror behind your phone and then you can at least see yourself through the mirror. That's actually what I'm doing right now. You're gonna see I have my camera hooked up to an external monitor. So right here, I'm, I can see myself through my monitor, through the other camera, through my stabilizer, but I am filming everything on my, my phone. And the audio that you're hearing is actually coming from, I have a microphone above me. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but here's the, the audio coming from the microphone above me versus the audio that is now coming through the iPhone. Can you tell a difference between the iPhone quality microphone, which is what you're hearing right now, versus the audio that you're hearing from a microphone up top? It's really important that you probably get a better microphone because audio is so important with video. When you can have better audio, people are most likely going to watch your video longer. So do yourself a favor later down the road and upgrade in a better microphone. Okay, so another thing I want you to keep in mind is everything around me looks pretty freaking good because I have a really strong key light. I've got this big light dome here that's shining light on my face, giving me a nice smooth lighting across the, the left side of my face. And then I've got this rim light behind me. With these two lights, I'm able to get an image like this. And I'm also forgetting I have a lamp here lighting up my background and a window behind me. You can use practical lights and all you need is like one good key light. A rim light also helps as well. I did a whole video on this. You can go check out the different lights you can buy for $100 total. You can get a full studio light set up for only $100. But real quick, I want you guys to do a comparison between this camera versus the camera I was on just a few moments ago. One camera is $5,000. The other camera, my iPhone, is $1,000 but then I also spent $3 on this app to give me full camera control. The $3 that I spent on this app is worth every single penny. This app has been proven to be better than Filmic Pro, which is a $15 app that you can buy. $3 versus 15, fantastic. This app is great. All right, so real quick, let's go over a brief overview of how to shoot better iPhone videos. Number one, you wanna make sure you're shooting at 4K resolution at 24 frames per second. And when you're shooting at 4K, 24 frames per second, you wanna make sure that you're using these settings. You wanna make sure your shutter speed is at one over 50. Your ISO is as low as possible. For example, I had mine at 200. 200 is a pretty good spot to be at. If you can go lower, go lower. Then I didn't mention it, but you wanna sit as close as possible to your camera that still looks good, obviously. That way you can rack your focus in closer to the camera and have a blur your background behind you. When you can do that, your videos are gonna look really, really, really crisp. Next up is you wanna adjust your white balance so that your skin tones look natural. I had mine at 5,500 Kelvin, 5,500K, but again, you can change this up as much as you want and have it be a stylized look, or you can just keep things as natural as possible, which in my opinion, I like that look. Once your settings look like this, you're already on a really great start. The next thing we need to go over is lighting. Now I did a whole video on good lighting, especially lighting with your iPhone for really, really cheap. You can go watch that video up here. But just an overview, having a great key light and then a rim light to highlight the back of your neck or in the back of your head, that's really going to completely change the way your videos look. And if you don't have a key light, you can just go sit next to a window. Just keep in mind that when you sit next to a window, you're probably gonna pick up any extra audio if you live near a highway like I do, or if you live in a city, just keep that in mind. But weigh out your pros and cons because sitting next to a window can definitely provide you with better light, no matter whether it's a sunny day or if it's cloudy and overcast. Honestly, cloudy and overcast is most likely way better because you avoid any harsh sunlight. Guys, I really hope that you found this video helpful. Comment below if you have any questions. I would be happy to answer them for you. And if you like this video, make sure to like it below so that more people get to see it. And subscribe to our channel for all things digital marketing and content creation. We go over all of the good stuff here on this channel. So turn on the bell notifications so that you never miss another upload. Again, thank you so much for watching. And like always, I will see you in the next video.